I was reading the Sunday Star Times today and there was an article reprinted from The Guardian by Leo Hickman. It starts, Telling children about climate change could leave them angry, worried, even traumatised. So when and how should we do it? Because as you see, this is a subject which is depressing. It could have a predominantly negative impact on their lives. Should we shield children from the bad news as long as possible? Or do they deserve to know the truth? Because it's them who will have to pick up the tab and live with the fallout. How can we explain to them without leaving the child traumatised? They then give examples of how various experts introduce this topic to impressionable young minds. For example, Debbie Gliori, in her book The Trouble with Dragons, talk about dragons who blow out lots of hot air and destroy the world around them. We have Professor Hugh Montgomery who talks about the stinky gases that are damaging the planet. Stinky gases? Carbon dioxide? I believe it's odorless. We have Christine Howe, um, Professor of Education from the University of Cambridge who believes that climate change should be now a recurring theme throughout the school curriculum. It appears she's a bit late. It already is. It saturates the curriculum. And George Marshall, a veteran campaigner for the Climate Outreach Organisation, says we're living through an extraordinary period of change and children have to know that climate change is the enemy within. The whole article takes the normal framing of the argument whereby the actual truth of the matter is taken as some sort of um, indisputable fact that needs to be imparted to children. For example, like 100 centimetres make a metre, Wellington is the capital of New Zealand, greenhouse gases are causing catastrophic human-induced climate change. For example, shouldn't we be encouraging children to ask questions such as why has there been no global warming since 1998, despite the fact that there has been a 6% increase in the supposed pollutant carbon dioxide? Why has there been a measured cooling of the oceans by the 3,000 buoys of the Argo network? Why has there been no increase in global number or intensity of hurricanes? And why has there been no increase in the rate of sea level increase above the 2 to 3 millimetres per year that we've seen since the last ice age? Mr Hickman concludes his article by recollecting how his daughter Esme has asked him why don't we just stop hurting the planet? Fairer questions would be why don't global warming demagogues stop hurting children's mental well-being with scare stories? And why don't they stop hurting children's chances of a better future by guilt-tripping them into accepting a lower living standards than their parents have?